Hey guys, Dodging here, and Gigglebot and I are going to transform my spook shop into a terraforming shop. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> Just joined by Gigglebot here, and together we're going to make this look like a mountain. We're going to take these materials and build around the existing shop and make it look like a mountain with a cave. Let's get rid of the actual fencing here. I want it to look as natural as possible. Okay, so what I was thinking was, because it's going to be a terraforming shop, it's going to sell terraforming things for people who don't like to grind to right. find their materials. So I'm thinking like a mountain with some grass on top, maybe a tree somewhere. Okay. Like a custom built tree. That's right up my alley. And if we just keep the inside the way it is, I can work with the inside and transform it into the terraforming shop okay i'm just i'm not very good at terraforming myself i haven't <laughs> experimented a lot with that kind of stuff you haven't experimented with it but you want to sell it as a service <laughs> yes yeah th that's exactly <laughs> why <laughs> awesome <laughs> awesome very uh, very adventurous of you i like it i like it yeah Let's uh let's get this going. So I see you're you're coming around on this shape here. Is this just a basic pattern to follow that you're getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is so I'm just kind of following the base pattern of like a hill that you would see like in like maybe a, a hills biome or something like that. Like like you know, it starts out with like this this stone layer, like this base stone layer here, and then it goes up a little bit, you know, it kind of tapers inward some. Uh, I think maybe here on the front, we could have like a sheer cliff face and even like a waterfall coming down. And to come in, we have like a piston that like suppresses the waterfall and that'd be the door. I think that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. I yeah, like, and I, could, I like I could, that uh, work idea. Up, I could work up the redstone for that too. That's not too hard. But then, yeah, just kind of taper it in on some on a couple of the sides and cover it with grass on top and things like that. It won't be a very hard process. It'll just be a little bit of a tedious one. We're going to need way more stone and andesite than you have in that barrel there. <laughs> All right. I might have some. Let me see. I know I have some at my base. I can always jump back and go get some. Okay. Yeah, and, and worst comes to worst, you know, I'm sure we both have um, silk touch pickaxes. We can just go and grind some real quick. Over here, my blue shulker has some excess materials leaves cool. and such go away thank you okay thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we can use the leaves and the dark oak that's in there i oh, got the leaves would be cool stone. like once we get the um top part done like I, do you want it to be like a hill or more like a, a like a plateau kind of look because i could go with either one we could have like a little hill on top of that like it wouldn't be just completely flat obviously but i think like if you wanted a tree and even like we could put like a small pond up there or whatever i just think we would have a lot more to work with if we had a plateau up there rather than like a rounded hilltop all right that, let's go with the plateau then that sounds like a better idea all right Obviously, like I don't, I don't want to hijack your project. This is, of course, your thing. I just want to make sure we're both on the same page. Yep, no problem. Um, cool I'm dude. gonna, I'm gonna jump back to my base for a second and pick okay. up some more materials, and I will be right back. All right, this is starting to look really good. Thank you. I'm gonna start, uh, gonna start adding the dirt layer. I'm gonna get it built up around the perimeter, looking like this, and then I'm gonna start adding dirt even like as low as like maybe i don't know here ish or so and then we can start on the uh the roof all right sounds good like my my ultimate goal here uh, i'll build out a section of this show you the shape that i'm going for and then we can build it in variations all around um so like i said i'm almost done here 
Uh, just maybe something like that, maybe. Okay. And that, that dirt will be the top? Yeah. All right. Trying not to go into this other building too much. I'm. This is a this is a YT Corp shop here. Yeah, that's. that's I wonder if they, if they noticed if eatery, we just like yeah. moved the whole shop over by one block. <laughs> <laughs> just occurred to me. All I had in my inventory was stone. No andesite for the variation. That's all right. Usually, when I do stuff like this in creative and sometimes even in survival, I start with a single block usually stone and then from there i punch in all of like the andesite and the the diorite and whatever else uh, happens to be going into a build like this and then add the other smaller details like the stairs and the slabs and whatever else so you know starting with stone isn't bad we can come back later with the silk touch pick and some other andesite and replace as we need to one thing we're going to have to do really well is light up the inside of this thing because it's going to be a mob farm. Starting to come together? Oh, yeah. I'm sure as soon as we start adding dirt, it'll form it, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so amazing when you when you do a build like this. Like, you know, first of all, stuff like this, like adding the stone, it seems like it takes forever, but it really comes together quickly. But then when you add the dirt on top, it's like it breathes a whole new life to it, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, I think for a first pass, this is um, this is pretty good. There's maybe like a couple of places I might add a few things. But somebody once said that a great work of art is never complete, only abandoned. So, you know, if we keep tinkering, we're just going to keep going to the end of time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think it's time to add some dirt. back to my base i'm gonna see if i have any more dirt or anything like that but uh i really don't think i do i can always grind some out of the hill next to us too oh that's uh that's free real estate that's free real estate <laughs> <laughs> i'll just do that then it's a lot faster than going back to my base i think that's all the dirt i can handle right now all right so do we want to take this from the edge and go in flat to finish it off uh i think as far as flat goes this is actually good uh, we might want to take this little bit like this little hill that's getting started here and just move it back so that it can be like the start of like a small river going into a pond and then bring that pond maybe center ish have a tree going over and then bring the waterfall out from it down here and use that as the door okay Let's see, the door, the door is right here, these two blocks, so let's, and I think, like, we'll have a, we'll have a couple of pistons that, like, push up blocks right here, I guess, so it suppresses the water, and you can go in. Are you still planning on having that building in there, or do you want to make it look more like a cave? The ceiling and walls are going to look like a cave. Okay, cool. I want to stay in kind of the same theme as what's going on in Spawn Point. I got the dark oak to work with in my shulker over here. So okay. So I think we'll just we'll go with the dark oak and see how it goes. I believe I have dark oak leaves too. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I was do. just about I to do. ask that. I have oak and spruce leaves. Well, as far as patterns go, oak and dark oak leaves are just different by name. Well, good, because I have a bunch of oak leaves and very few dark oak leaves. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> I'm Maybe... just trying to build a tree. <laughs> I 
I got us covered. I knew where there was a bed. Oh, thank goodness. We have a bed out front now. Awesome. <laughs> How's that looking? That looks really good. I like the way the the leaves are drooping down, almost like a Thanks. willow. That's what I was going for. Let's let's uh, do it for the vine. Oh, when that when the vines grow, that will just that will look so cool. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This is like a I guess a bigger version of the little willow that I have on my farm. I'm gonna need to um, find all the components that I need for the redstone to work. Because as of right now, I have like zero redstone. Yeah, let me go see what I got. All right, cool. I'm not sure how many observers you actually need for that project. Me either. I need enough to tower up from the base all the way to the very top of the plateau. All right, so I got these two shulkers right here. The red and gray are all my redstone. Ooh. Very cool. All right, yeah, I can work with this. Okay. So this little trench here is where the water is going to fall into. Okay. So I think the pressure plate's going to have to be like around here-ish, right in the middle of the path. That's uh, that's convenient. <laughs> I can always divert the path if we need to. Nah, we don't want to do any any public terraforming here unless if somebody pays us to. I I was offered a spot in the um, boat ink. Oh yeah. They're the ones that do a lot of that stuff. What'd you say? I I thought about it for a, quite a bit, and I did accept. I accepted the spot, and right away, Friendly was like, well, let me talk to everybody else. He went away for two seconds and came back and said, okay, you're in. Uh -huh. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably like, let me speak to the manager. I am the manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So could you can you explain a little bit how this um, redstone is gonna work for the observers? Yeah. So the observers, I have an observer tower going up right now. So it's basically going to send the redstone input directly upward, which is what makes observers so great. Because before that, the only way you could do that was through like a torch tower, and sometimes. The torch tower didn't exactly line up to where you wanted it to be, and that was a huge pain, and you had to rework all your redstone. But now, this uh, observer tower here, you know, obviously observers work by detecting a block update in front of it and uh, sending a pulse out. Uh, so right. it detects the observer in front of it and um, keeps sending pulses out until it reaches the top and eventually powers or unpowers these pistons. I know a bit of redstone, and there's still like the newer stuff. I'm still learning. Let me right. let me put it in perspective for you. When I first started playing Minecraft, it was 1.5. I stayed on 1.5 because I was unable to update. I had I did not have internet. Ah, uh, very nice. So I stayed Something on. Like me. I stayed on 1.5 for about six or seven years wow yeah so when i came into 114 i was just like what is this what is this what <laughs> what does this do i didn't it was a I, whole different game at that point <laughs> i didn't know anything <laughs> i think i think you were just a bit too early for the redstone update i think that was like 1.6 or 1.7 yeah, that's when we got like observers and comparators and things like that, which feels so weird to say because those things still feel so brand new to me, but they're like five, six years old now. Yes. All right. So now we're going to go put some pressure plates down and see if it still works with those. Oh, it worked. Oh, it worked. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Look at that. And then if you step on it again, it'll close all up. Dang it. Okay, I think, I think that should do it. Possibly. Nothing guaranteed, though. I just realized that I've been walking around in iron boots. 
when I have perfectly good diamond boots in my base. Dodging, how dare you? I have all this access to god armor, and I am wearing <laughs> iron boots. What a... <laughs> ah. What is the current state of the pistons? Are they up or down? They are down. Down. Yeah, down? Down. Good, 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 good. Okay, I think I fixed it. All right. Yeah. She's working. Start taking my walls apart and transforming the inside. All right. I'm uh, adding some micro details to the outside here. Oh, you know what would be really cool? What? About where is the tree, I can make it look like the roots are coming down inside since all the... I already have all these logs I used for the roof. Ooh, let me uh, let me go up there and get the coordinates of it. There the base is around 314, 240. Okay. 314. Either I, I broke something or we had an extra piece floating around. Extra piece of what? Redstone. Uh-oh. I don't think I added any extra redstone. Uh, no, I broke the corner. Cause you oh, went, no. You went right you on top of it. Yeah, I know exactly where it goes, too. That's good, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's all fixed? Yep. All right. I want to leave remnants of the old shop and make it look like the terrain overgrew the shop. Oh, that's a cool idea. That way, when they walk in... It still looks like my old shop. Very nice. I like that idea. And I gonna... think my micro details on the exterior are finished. I haven't even been outside yet, so I'm I'm kind of excited to see what's going on out there. Oh, I think you're gonna like it. <laughs> this is uh this is the part that I really enjoy in builds. Well, I haven't had any mobs yet, so I I don't think we have a mob problem. That's, in, that's always good. You always hate it when you're building something right, and then when I'm coming up to you and says, you'll come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like a mob a mob problem. I <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm a little biased here, but I think this is probably one of the coolest shops in the uh, in the shopping area. <laughs> if anything because it tells a story that's what i like i i've seen other people where they do build build into that build and it makes a story out right of the, out of the whole whatever happened like even if even if somebody were to log on for the first time right now not having seen the shop that was here before they would still be able to walk in and see the story unfold you know there was a shop here but it got overtaken by nature Okay, I believe I'm finally done with the exterior. A few more vines, and I think I'm going to be done with inside, too. This is really cool, because, like, you come in here, and it, like, transports you to another place, probably because there is more area in here that you can't access because it's beyond the walls of the shop. So it looks like there's, like, more cave or whatever in there that you can't see. Yeah. And I, I really like that. And I like this root system that you did. That's really cool. I really like the way this has turned out. Oh yeah, me too. And when all these vines grow to their full length, that it'll just look really good. Oh yeah. Oh wow. This looks really neat back here. Thanks. Oh man, the vines are starting to grow on this tree up here at, at the top and I'm starting to really like it. Yes sir, I would say that this is a very good build. It looks out of place. Oh yeah, and... and <laughs> The kind of out of place that it is, is a good kind of out of place, I think. Yeah. But before, before I do, is there anything that you want to say to, uh, to the fans, to the subscribers? I just, I want to really thank Mr. Gigglebot over here for giving us a hand on the shop build. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup of our boxes before I go. And we will see you guys next time. Well, thank you so much for uh, letting me be a part of this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir.